Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev to Srila Prabhupada and to all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Param. And finally, I offer my pranam to all of my dear Vaishnava brothers and sisters, By the causes mercy of Sri Guru and Goranga, I have the opportunity to have Darshan of all the Vaishnavas of New York today. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hare Krishna. It's my good fortune. <laughs> Especially because of the love and affection of Bhumipati Prabhu. Hare Krishna. And Sudarshan Chakra Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Was requesting me again and again <laughs> to come here. So some, somehow it happened. And especially I want to thank Krishna Mohan Prabhu and his wife for hosting the program here. I can see that he's very dedicated to Krishna's service. <laughs> his whole garden is like a Naimi Sharanya. <laughs> the place of Bhagavad Gita. Sorry. See, Jagarananda Pandit, he said, Gaurami, Gaurami, Muke Bolile Nahi Chale, Gaur Achar, Gaur Vichalele Pali Pali. Many persons, they say, I am Gauriya. Hmm? I belong to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I am a follower of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. By their mouth, they say, but actually they don't follow. Hmm? Because the fruit of being the follower of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will come only Gora Achar, Gora Vichar, Lale Fale Fale. When we become immersed in two things, Gora Achar and Gora Vichar. Gora Achar means the example he set in his life by his behavior. And Gora Vichar means the deep current of the conception of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not fully expand, he did not write upon this, but he has empowered his innermost heart's desire into the heart of Srila Rupa Goswami Therefore, Srila Narutam Das Thakur, he has written, Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam, Sapitam Yena Bhutare, Swayam Rupa Pratamayam, Tadati Swapadam. When will Srila Rupa Goswami Pai give me the shelter of his lotus feet? He is that person who established within this world the mission to reveal the Mano Vishta, the innermost heart's desire of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What is that? Mano Bhishta of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Our Srila Gurudev, Nipilila Parishtam Vishnupar, Ashtotara Sata Sishima, Dhrupalunga Acharivare, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami He very enthusiastically, with so much taste, traveled throughout the world to establish the bhakti as expressed by Rupa Goswami, Rupa Nuga Bhaja. You can see that when it was Radhastami, Srila Gurudev used to organize very beautiful festival in India. When it was Janmastami, it was a very beautiful festival for Krishna's birthday. But when it came round to the disappearance day of Srila Rupa Goswami, Srila Gurudev would organize a festival for five days. More emphasis. Even then, Janmastami or Radastami or Vishinga Trigorsi, any day, five days. This symposium he used to make and invite all the Vaishnav scholars in our Gaudiya line and from other Sampradayas, from Nimbarka Sampradaya, from Valab Sampradaya, to come and spend the time deliberating upon the revelations of Srila Rupa Goswami. Perhaps you know that when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he met Rupa Goswami in Prayag, there he said, Para para sunya gabir bhakti rasa sindhu Tomai chakai te kahe tahe kahe kabindu Hey Rupa, the ocean of bhakti rasa is para para sunya. It has no shore. You go in the 
Atlantic Ocean or Pacific Ocean, it's huge. But eventually, if you keep traveling, you get to the other side. But this Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Ocean of Rasa, you travel and travel and travel for millions of years, you never get to the other side. It has no shore and it has no bottom. Therefore, Mahaprabhu said, just to make you understand, I will describe a single drop. So Srila Gurudev gave an example. He said, it was as if Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took the finger of Rupa Goswami, dipped it into the ocean of rasa, and then said, taste this. And Rupa Goswami tasted that rasa, and then from that one drop, he manifested all his writings. Ujjwala Nilamani, Lalit Madhav, Vidakra Madhav, Stava Mala, Dan, Dan Kelly Komali, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. All the writings of Rupa Goswami came from that one drop. Yeah. It's enough to inundate the entire universe. So therefore, Srila Kadakanapur glorifying Rupa Goswami, he said, Brindavaniyam rasa keli vartam kalena luptam nija shakti utka sanchaya rupai vyatano punasa prabhu vidau prahi aloka shishti. He said that Brindavaniyam rasa keli vartam kalena luptam. The katha of the beautiful Rasa-laden pastimes of C.C. Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan had become lupta. It had become lost. It had disappeared from the world. So, why is that? Srila Vishnata in his commentary on the first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, you know there, the first verse, Janma Vyasya Yatan Vayat Itaratas Chateshva Vigas, right? So one of the meanings here is the birth or the appearance of Adi, Janma Adi of Adi Rasa, Madhuri Rasa, the romantic mood of Vrindavan. So Param Satyam Dimahi may we meditate upon that Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna, who causes the appearance of the Adiras, the romantic mood, Madhuras in this world. So, a person may say, this Madhuyarasa is eternal, it is Nitya. So, yes, so how can it have a Janma? How can it have a birth? It's an, it's an eternal Rasa. So in the commentary, Srila Vishnu Taritako explained that yes, though this Rasa is eternal, very often it disappears from this world. There's no flow of the Qatar of Madhuya Rasa. Why? Because of the censorship of very conservative transcendentalists. <laughs> uh, there are many transcendentalists. They discuss, you are not this body. They discuss the three modes of material nature. They discuss the glories of the Holy Name. They discuss reincarnation. All of these things are very important. But very often there is a censorship of the Madhurya Rasa. And when that happens, because they're very conservative, that flow of Qatar, of Radha Krishna's Leela, just disappears from the world. So, therefore, it is said, Sprindavaniyam Rasa Keli Vartam Kalinaluktam, gradually in time. The Qatar of Madhuri Rasa disappeared at that time. Sancharya Rupe Vyatano Punasa, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu inspired this Madhuri Rasa in the heart of Rupa Goswami in the, exactly the same way as in the beginning of the creation, the Supreme Lord inspired the Vedic knowledge into the heart of Lord Brahma. Tene Brahma Ridya Adi Kavaye Bhuyan Surya. So it's a wonderful thing. It is said that Sri Krishna inspired Lord Brahma at the place called Dashashvamedha Ghat. So now, at the time of Rupa Goswami, that very Krishna has appeared as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and is now doing the same thing, inspiring not the creation of the universe, inspiring not the, the Vedas, but rather inspiring into the heart of Rupa Goswami the creation 
of the world of Madhurya Rasa. So Srila Gurudev said one of the confidential meanings of this first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, Tene Brahma Ridea Adi Kadaye, means that it was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who revealed into the heart of Adi Kavaye, the original poet of Madhurya Rasa, Siddha Rupa Goswami. He revealed the Bhakti Rasa into the heart of Rupa Goswami. This is one of the confidential meanings of the first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. So, Muyanti Yatsuraya, Muyanti Yatsuraya means, one, the general meaning is, that the demigods, they are bewildered in turn, when it comes to understanding what is the Paramatattva. But Surayaha also means devotees. So, it means that when Srila Rupa Goswami spoke his poetry in Jagannath Puri, in the association of Mahaprabhu and his associates, when they heard for the first time the beautiful poetry of Rupa Goswami, they all became astonished that they were fainting in ecstasy. Muyanti Yatsure. You see, Sila Rupa Goswami, after being instructed by Mahaprabhu, he went to Vrindavan. And then from there he was traveling on foot, nearly 2,000 kilometers, and he was on his way to Jagannath Puri. On, on the way, he was writing a drama but he stopped at a village called Satyabhamapur. And there at night, he saw Satyabhama in a dream. And she told him, O oh, Rupa, you should write a separate drama about me. And Rupa Goswami realized, oh, I was writing a drama about Krishna's Leela in Vrindavan, and then how he went to Mathura, and when he went, how he went to Dwarka. But now, she's telling me, I should divide it into two parts. And one became... Sri Vidagna Madhav Nataka and the other one Sri Lalit Madhav Nataka. Okay. So then Rupa Goswami continued and he arrived in Jagannath Puri. He gave pranams to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And without telling anything to Mahaprabhu about what he was writing or what happened in Satyabhama Pur, Mahaprabhu said to him, O Rupa, Krishna nyo yadusambhuto napu nasostata para brindavanam pritajak kvachin eva nagatsati. Oh Rupa, don't take Krishna out of Vrindavan. Because that Krishna who is known as the son of Vasudeva and Devaki, that is another. That's his Vaibhava Prakashi's expansion. Because Krishna Vrindavan, Vrindavan Prithyadya, he never takes one step outside of Vrindavan. So then Rupa Goswami, he realized, oh, what Satyabhama told me, now that is being confirmed directly by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. So, Sila Rupa Goswami, when he was in Puri, he used to stay with Sila Haridas Thakur. Perhaps you've been there in Puri to the place, Siddha Bakul. Very wonderful place. Mahaprabhu used to have Haridas Thakur stay there. When I used to go there with Gurudev, Gurudev was very happy. <clears throat> he used to sit down in Siddha Bakul and say, <clears throat> This is our place. Yeah. This is our place. Why? Because we are followers of Rupa, Sila Rupa Goswami. So in Jagannath Puri, this is our place because this is the place in Jagannath Puri where Rupa Goswami used to stay. And then he used to tell to, the, to us, the, those who have the bodies from the West in this life, he used to say, and especially, it is your place. Why? Because this is the place of all the rejects. Those who are being rejected uh, from the Vedic society, uh, the, those who cannot go in the Jagannath Puri temple. Uh, actually, the first time Srila Gurudev went to Jagannath Puri, he, they also stopped him from going in the temple. Uh, because his skin was very fair and his eyes are blue. <laughs> so not so many Indian persons have the bright blue eyes. So when Gurudev was going into the temple in Jagannath Puri, the pandas stopped him. Oh, what is your go to? Where are you from? Who's your family line? Everything. And he had to give a long explanation, then they believed, okay, you can escape. But, you see, Srila Haridas Thakur, he could not go inside the Jagannath temple because he was born in a Muslim family. And Srila Rupa Goswami and Srila Sanatan Goswami, also they were not allowed to go in because in their previous career, they had accepted the service in the government of Nabu Hussein Shah. 
and so they were ostracized from the political culture. So Sri Thakur would stay there, Urupa Goswami would stay there, Sila Sanatana Goswami, all those who were rejected. So Gurudev said, oh, you Western devotees, this is also especially your place. All the rejects are staying here. But this place, the Siddhapakul, is a place of utmost importance to us. Why? Because it was the first place when the sound of Srila Rupa Goswami's poetry was revealed. Uh, in this, the first time in this day of Lord Brahma. Mm -hmm. One day, Rupa Goswami was staying there with, Sanata, with uh, Srila Haridas Thakur. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came with Swarup Damodar, Roy Ramananda, Paramananda Puri, and other associates. So Mahaprabhu sat up on a raised platform with his intimate associates. And Rupa Goswami and Srila Haridas Thakur, they sat down in a lower position. So at that time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to test Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya and Roy Ramananda. Why? Actually, they are great scholars and great poets. They've written so much Sanskrit poetry. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu knew that the poetry that Rupa Goswami was writing would be unprecedented, no comparison at all. So Mahaprabhu wanted to hear Rupa Goswami's poetry so that Roy Ramananda and, Sar and Sarvam Bhattacharya, they would hear it and he would see their reaction. Because they... They know the measure of what is good Sanskrit poetry and they know what is the extent of the expression of Aprakrita Rasa, Transcendental Mellows. So, <coughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, oh, Rupa Goswami, you can uh, recite some of the verses uh, that you are writing. So then Rupa Goswami, he read one verse. Tunde tanda mani ratin vitanute tanda vali labde kana kroda kadam vani gatayate kana ude bras vingam chaita prangana rangini vijayate sa vindriyami kritin no jane janita kirat piramita krishne ivana dvai I do not know how much Amrita, how much nectar is in these two syllables, Krishna. When these two syllables, Krishna, come together, so much Amrita is emanating from them that I think, oh, why did the Creator make me with only one tongue? I want millions and millions of tongues to taste this name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And then when the sound of this name goes in my ear, it's somewhat improvement because only one time but two years, that's an improvement. <laughs> but the, the two years is not enough. I want millions and millions of ears. And when that sound goes in the ear and then goes in my heart and begins to dance in the courtyard of my heart, then all the senses, they become stunned, inert, and one goes into samadhi in trance. When Srila Haridas Thakur heard this poetry of Rupa Goswami, you see, Srila Haridas Thakur, he has experience, but he has not vocalized, he has not articulated. In fact, he never heard anyone articulate so beautifully the power of the holy name. And Srila Haridas Thakur jumped up and began to dance. <laughs> he said, Krishna Namera Mohina Shastra Sadhu Muki Jani Namera Madhuri Aichi Kahan Nahi Shuni. Srila Haridas Thakur said, The glories of the holy name, which are written in Shastra, one must hear them from the lips of a pure devotee. Must hear from the lips of a pure devotee. There is no other place anywhere where you can catch the experience of the sweetness of Krishna's name only when you hear the Shastra 
and the glories of the name explained from the lips. Krishna Namero Mohima Shastri Sadhumuki Jani. When you hear from this, then you know. Then you can understand something. Otherwise not. Why is that? In Srimad Bhagavatam, there it is said. Ye tu twadiya charnam buja kosta ko kosha gandam jigrantikana vivarei shuti vartanitam bhakti grihita charna pareya chitisham na paisi nata charnam guru hat and suyogam here Lord Brahma is saying Oh my Lord, the pure devotees, when they hear about you, when they chant about you, you appear, your lotus feet appear on the lotus of their heart and you never leave them. This is real sravan, this is real kirtan. Real sravan, real hearing and real kirtan means spurti. To have a, 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 a revelation in the pure heart. The, the chitta, the chitta which is very steady, not disturbed chitta. When the chitta is disturbed, then many desires appear. Mm -hmm. But when the chitta is steady, then it becomes very, very shining like a mirror. So he said in Srimad Bhagavatam, Swachatvam Avikaritvam Shantamam Iti Chaitasa. The nature of the chitta is three things. Shantatvam means when the chitta is uncontaminated, one feels peacefulness. One has no desires. Adhikaritvam means you don't feel sleepy and you don't feel distracted. And especially Swachatvam. Swachatvam means clear. It means Bhagavad Bimba Grahitvam. That this, the, the chitta has the capacity to catch the reflection of the form of the Lord. So as soon as the devotee, his heart is steady, is detached from this world, not having any worldly desires, and peacefully chants the holy name, then the beautiful Swarupa of Shama Sunda is reflected in the mirror of the heart. And Krishna, he doesn't leave that devotee's heart. So, Jigranti, and those devotees, by listening to Harikata, they smell the fragrance, the sweet aroma of Krishna's lotus feet through their ears. Generally, this will be smelled through the nose. But if you want to smell the fragrance of Krishna's lotus feet, you have to smell through the ears. So how can you smell through the Because the ears are listening to sound. But here, Sruti Vata Nitam means that the fragrance of Krishna's lotus feet is carried on the spiritual air of transcendental sound. Mm. So when a Vaishnava who has realized Krishna articulates the glories of Krishna, that Shabda Brahma, that transcendental sound vibration is carrying the form of Krishna and the fragrance of Krishna's lotus feet. And those who will hear with respect, with honor, in a very humble mood, being surrendered at the lotus feet of their Guru Day, directly they experience Krishna. Sadyo Ritya Avarudete In the very beginning, second verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. It is said, This Srimad Bhagavatam is so powerful that even one who just desires to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, then immediately Krishna will come and be trapped in his heart and will not be able to leave. The word tachanat, tachanat, means in that very moment, there and then, tachanat, that moment. Also, chana, the word chana, means utsav, festival. In other words, that the discussion of Krishna's pastimes, as they're described in Srimad Bhagavatam, is so ecstatic. It's such a festival that Krishna himself wants to hear it. So as soon as you want to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna says, jai, jai. It's a festival time. And he runs and he sits down in your heart and he's waiting to listen to Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> Harikatar is so powerful. So, when Srila Rupa Goswami, he began to read his poetry, glorifying the holy name. 
Sila heard us talk or at once got up and began to dance. He said, oh, you have to hear from the lips of a pure devotee. Then you can realize how sweet is Krishna's name. How sweet are Krishna's pastimes. So hearing this Ramananda Rai, he was astonished. He said, oh, Rupa, what kind of drama are you writing? It seems to be something unprecedented. Can you tell us how you've given pranam to your Ishtadev, the Mangala Charnam of your drama? How have you introduced the characters? You know, because in Vedic drama, there are so many uh, rules and in regard to the technique of expression of the drama. The Natakam should have 10 acts. There should be, it should be based on some historical, well-known uh, story, which is found in the Shastra. There should be a hero, and the desire of the hero should be inspired by some situation, and he's striving to fulfill his, his goal. But then many obstacles should come, and then he should become completely discouraged and feel like it's a failure. And then something else should happen in the drama that gives him hope, and he becomes encouraged again. So these are the these are the structures, uh, the rules for writing the Vedic Anatakam, Vedic dramas. So Ramanand Rai, he's very expert in all of these things. You know, there are 33 sanctuary parts, 33 different types of transitory assisting emotions. So all of them, they should be there in the drama somewhere like that. Then it will be complete. When the audience see that drama, then they have a complete meal. You know, not just sweet, not just sour, but all the flavors of rasa should be there. So Ramananda Rai, he knows all these technical details of how to express rasa. So he was interested to know, how is Rupa Goswami writing this drama? Can you tell me? How do you uh, give honor to your Ishtadev? Then Rupa Goswami, he became shy, he was embarrassed. Why? Because his Ishtadev is Mahaprabhu and he's sitting right there. <laughs> Mahaprabhu said, don't be shy, you can you read. Rupa Goswami said, Anarpita charim chirat karunaya bhakti naha kalo samarpai tumun nata kujwara rasam sabakti sriyam hari purata sundara juti kadam basandi pita sadari de kandari spratuva satinandana. May that son of Sachi appear in the innermost cave of your heart. He has appeared in this Kali Yuga, resplendent with the radiance of molten gold, to give what no incarnation has ever given before in this day of Lord Brahma, out of his causeless mercy. Samarapaitum unnat ujjwala rasa swapati Ujjwala rasa, that is the romantic mood of Vrindavan, Madhuya rasa, swapati sriyam, and the beauty of that, which is Radha Dasyam, the mood of service to Shimati Radhika. So, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard this, it was glorification of himself, he covered his ears. Sri Vishnu, Sri Vishnu, Sri He said, Rupa Goswami, your poetry is like Amrita, like nectar. Why did you put in this drop of distasteful alkaline? A hmm? little bit of poison in it. Why did, why did you do that? Ramananda Rai stood up to the defense of Rupa Goswami. He said, no, no, no. This is not a drop of alkali. This is a, a, a touch of camphor to make the nectar more fragrant and more flavorful. So Ramananda Rai, he said, what is the use of the arrow of the bowman if it enters the heart but it does not cause the head to spin? So in the same way, what is the use of the poetry of the, of the poets if it enters the heart but does not cause your head to spin? That means poetry should be so beautiful you become bewildered. Therefore, Tene Brahma Ridya Adi Kave Bhuyanti Yatsuraya. When the devotees, Sarva Bhombadacharya, Roy Ramananda, Swarup Damodaka Swami, Paramananda Puri, when they heard the poetry of Rupa Goswami, their heads were spinning, Bhuyanti Yatsuraya. They felt that they would faint in ecstasy. So, May Sachinandan appear in your heart. Why is Rupa Goswami saying that? He's saying it because if someone tries to explain to you the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they're so gambir, 
It's very difficult to understand. But if the beautiful golden form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will appear in your heart, only seeing his form, Samarapayatum Unnatu Uchimaras. Jiva Goswami in his commentary on this verse, he said, actually, there's no question of Mahaprabhu giving this Madhuya Rasa and anyone taking it. There's no act of giving and no act of receiving. There's only this. If you just see the golden complexion of Mahaprabhu, then you receive it. Only seeing him. There's many examples. You know, when Mahaprabhu was in Puri and he wanted to go to Vrindavan, very humbly, he said to Swar Ganga and Ramananda, please, for a long time I wanted to go to Vrindavan, but every year you buy some trick, you keep me here in Puri. So now I'm asking you, give me permission, let me go to Bernal. So then they said, yes, yes, you, you should go, but uh, if you want to please us, then please take a, a Brahmin with you, who can carry your um, Kamandalu, your water pots and your fresh cloth, who can go begging in the village and prepare some food for you. So Mahaprabhu, he, he agreed, <laughs> and they selected the Balabhadra Bhattacharya to go with him. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was leaving Puri, many of the devotees followed him. Actually, they followed him as far as Katak, to the cap that was the capital of, of Orissa at that time. So the king of Puri, Prataparudra Maharaj, he heard that Mahaprabhu was going to Vrindavan, and he was very eager to serve him in every way. So he told his servants, oh, you should prepare some houses in the village so each time Mahaprabhu stops in the evening time, he should stay in a newly prepared place with his associates. And you should bring Mahaprasadam from Jagannath Puri so he can take Jagannath Prasadam in each village as he's going through Orissa. He told his associates, when he gets to a river, you should make sure that there's a special beautiful boat decorated with flags to take him across whenever he needs to cross the river like the Chitrakpal River. Also, Prataburta Maharaj told his associates, and wherever Mahaprabhu takes bath in a river, then you should make a monument, make a stone monument there and say, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took bath here in this river. <laughs> Maharaj Prataburta said, and I will go there, and I will also take bath there, it will become a holy place. What to speak of that? I want to die on the bank of the river where Mahaprabhu has taken bath. So in this way, he was expressing his love for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and trying to serve Mahaprabhu as much as he could in every way possible. So, but then he thought, oh, he's a sannyasi. So, actually the, the ladies, the queens and the princesses in my palace, they've never had his association, they haven't seen him. So I, I want to arrange some opportunity that they should have the darshan of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, Maharaj Parudra, he knew along which road Mahaprabhu would be coming to go to the next village. So he arranged some elephants. And on the back of the elephants, he made some tents, platform with a tent on it, completely covered, cloth on all sides. And the ladies of the palace, the princesses and queens of his palace, they were all hidden inside the tents on the backs of the elephants. And they were on the side of the road. Then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came walking along the road, singing the glories of the Lord. <coughs> Krishna, 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 Inside the tents, they were peeping through the cloth. And from far away, they saw Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And only seeing the golden form of Mahaprabhu, 
long arms reaching down to his knees, his lotus eyes reaching around to his ears, tears washing his body, his soft golden body, soft like butter, so effulgent, absorbed in Radhabhat, in the mood of Radharani, going to burn, he's going to burn Dhaban, feeling so much separation from Krishna in Radhabhat. So when those queens inside the tents, they saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from far away, immediately they became overwhelmed with praying, they began to cry and they fainted and fell to the ground. Emana Kripala Nahi Shuni Tribhubane Krishna Prema Holy Jarabi Tarasani Sri Krishna Sagar Gopanta Never ever in all the three worlds has anyone heard of someone so merciful of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Even those who would see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from far away, they would attain Krishna Prema. So this is Samar Paritum Unnata Uchwara. Only seen before. Why? How is it possible that one gets praying simply by seeing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu without taking shelter of Rupa Goswami? No one would understand. No one would understand. We want to explain how is it that one attains Krishna praying just from the darshan of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Why is that? Srila Rupa Goswami in Uchala Nilamani, he describes the Mahabhav of Srimati Radhika. Anuraga so sambedya dasha prapa prakashita yavad ashraya vritis chen bhav itya vidyate. Mahabhav, the highest love of Radhika, has three prominent qualities. First is the swasambedya dasha. That is that When Radhika sees the sweetness of Krishna, she becomes so absorbed in that sweetness that she forgets who she is. Naso Ramana Nahama Ramani Dumanu Manubhava Peshwajani. Radhika said, I am not his lover and he is not my beloved. Cupid has melted our hearts and we have become one. So seeing the sweetness of Krishna, Radhika forgets everything. And she becomes lost in that sweetness. But because of her anurag, the nature of Radhika's love is a prema dori nitya radhika e kale amara madhurya amrita ashwade sokale. It is the nature of Radhika's love that Krishna's sweetness is in, she sees that it's increasing at every moment. Everyone doesn't see like that. But her anurag makes Krishna appear newer and newer every moment. And then, when Krishna's sweetness increases, then her taste for that increases and her anurag increases. So then Krishna's sweetness, his sweetness is increasing, her anurag is increasing like this. They're competing with each other unlimitedly, right? without end. This is called swasamrita dash. Then prakashita means that Radhika's hair is standing, Tears flowing, her body is trembling, her complexion is fading, she's becoming stunned. All eight sattvic bars come at the same time, very intensive, called Prakashita. And then the last one, Yavad Ashray Vritti. Yavad Ashray Vritti means that the love of Radhika is so powerful that it spreads out in all directions and affects everyone all around her in proportion to the degree of their relationship with her. So everyone is affected, but to different degrees. So that is called Yavad Ashray Vritti. So you know, Rupa Goswami has revealed, in Uchala Nila Mani, this is of two types. One type is called the Brahmanda Shobha Karita. That the love of Radhika when she's in separation makes a disturbance throughout the whole universe. When Radhika, when Krishna has gone to Mathura, Radhika sits on the bank of Jamuna and wraps herself in Krishna's pitamba, yellow cloth, cloth and cries, Ananda Kula Chandra Maha, Kwasi Chandra Kalankriti, Kwamanda Mura Lira Maha, Kwadu Surendra Nila Juti, Kwadasura Sutandavi, 
Oh my Sahi, where did Krishna go? Where is he who is like a moon, who appeared in the dynasty of Nanda Maharaj, whose complexion is like a brilliant sapphire, whose notes upon his flute are so deep and so sweet, who is like a medicine to save my life. I am dying without him. Oh, Saki, please bring Krishna that medicine to save my life. Alas, alas, Lord Brahma Vidhi, the creator of providence, he is written in my fate that I have to cry. And when we this way, everyone becomes disturbed. Her Sakis are fainting. The bumblebees, they give up the flower. They don't take the honey from the flowers anymore. And they roll on the ground weeping. Even the fish in the Jumuna cry. Even the demigods in the heavenly planets, they begin to perspire. Even Lakshmi Devi in Vaikuntha begins to cry. In other words, the power of Radhika's love for Krishna, this Mahabharata, is so intense, it spreads out and disturbs the entire universe. This is one of the symptoms of Radhika's Mahabharata, Yavada Shraibriti, Pramanda Shobhakarita. And there's another symptom. The other symptom is called Asan Janita Ridvilola. It means that it churns the hearts of those who are close enough to Radhika either to see or to hear her. So this is very, very important point for the followers of Rupa Goswami. Why is that? Because there are some bars, some ecstasies of Radhika which can only be, be felt Swami, I never ask you for anything. I only want to be your maid servant. I bow down to your sakis, your friends like Lalita and Vishaka again and again. They are worshipful for me. I eternally bow down to them, but I don't want to be like them. Hmm? That means Lalita and Vishaka, they are the contemporaries of Radhika, the same age, they are her friends. But when Radhika meets with Sri Krishna, she becomes shy in the presence of Lalita and Vishaka. So to give Radhika the space uh, to meet with Krishna in an uninhibited way, then Lalita and Vishaka, they retreat and they go into the distance. They meet on the bank of Jumuna, they sit down beneath the Kadamba tree, they talk with each other. But when Radha and Krishna go into the Kunjas of Vrindavan, at that time, Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari, the maid servants of Radhika, they can go into the Kunj and serve in so many ways. So sometimes they wait outside because Brinda Devi arranges that in the Kunj there's a ceiling fan and it's connected to a rope and then the rope goes outside. So then the maid servants of Radhika, they may sit outside and they may <laughs> pull the string like this to keep Radha Krishna cool during their loving pastimes. Right? So sometimes they don't see, but they can hear uh, the sound of the ankle bells of Radhika. They can hear the sound of Radha Krishna's pastimes. And being close enough only to hear, then Radhika's Mahabharata completely vyap, which means pervade, vyap means pervades them. Radhika's Madanakya Mahabharata, which no one has, not Chandravani, nor the Gopi, not even Lalita, not even the Shaka, it pervades the masons of Radhika from head to toe because of Yavada Shraibriti, the spreading out of her bark to those who can hear or those also close enough to see. So, because Krishna appears in this world as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's in Radha Bhar. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is chanting the holy name in the mood of Radhika, then Yavada Shraibriti, that potency is there, that Radhika's bar is spreading out. And those who are close enough to see, then they become, yeah, they become inundated in that. And that's why the, the wives of Prataburna Mahaprabhu, they're all fainting. Only see Mahaprabhu from, from far away. 
If Sri Rupa Goswami Pad had not explained these things, no one would know. They just think, oh, okay, it sounds okay. But Rupa Goswami is explaining how these are the symptoms of radicals move. So we just start, is it okay? What time can we go to? 826. When how long do you go on here? <laughs> So, Sila Rupa Goswami, he said, uh, in regard to Sila Rupa Goswami, he said, Sri Chaitanya Manovishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale. All the confidential secrets of Radha Krishna's Leela, the bars of Radhika, no one knew them. No one could understand them. This love, even no one had heard the name of this love. What is Madanaki Mahabharata? But, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu inspired this into the heart of Sri Rupa Goswami. So then Ramananda Rai and the others, this poetry is very beautiful. Can you tell us, tell us some more of this very beautiful poetry. So then Rupa Goswami continued to read. Pida bina bakala kuta katata garavasya nirvasano Nisyande na mudam sudam udure mahankara sampochana Prima sundari nanda nanda na paro jagati asyantare Jayante sputamasya vakramaturas Nainai vavikrantaya Simati Radhika is young. She's just started to fall in love with Krishna. Whenever she sees a peacock feather, she starts to tremble. If anyone mentions, talks about deer in the forest, the black deer in the forest are called Krishna Sar. Mm. If someone mentions Krishna Sar, then Radharani starts crying uncontrollably. Her mother in law, Jupiter, is thinking, What happened to my daughter in law? She's acting very strange, trembling, crying. Hmm? Is she sick? So Jupiter went to Purnamasi Devi. And said to Purnamasi, I think that my daughter is, has become sick. She must have some illness. Hmm? Purnamasi Devi said, don't be worried. I'll take care of this. Jatila didn't understand that what Purnamasi would take care of is that she would arrange that Krishna would meet with Radhika. So Nani Muki was Nani Muki's daughter, granddaughter of Purnamasi. She asked, what's wrong with Radhika? Then Purnamasi said, Pida Vina Vakala Kuta Katata. Oh, you don't know? She has Krishna brain, love for Krishna. <laughs> and only one who has experienced this love for Krishna can know what it's like. This love for Krishna, Vikrantaya, it attacks your heart. And it is like Pida Bina Vakala Kuta Katata. It's, it's so painful. It's the pain that it causes defeats the pain caused by the fresh. Uh, poison of a serpent, but at the same time, the sweetness of this brain defeats the ego of Amrita from the heavenly planets being poured upon your head. And so, when this Krishna brain appears in the heart, it's like a mixture of poison and nectar. When Rupa Goswami said this, oh, Ramananda Rai, Sarvabhaumanita, everyone, they are amazed. What a beautiful expression! of Krishna brain. Oh, Rupa Goswami, tell us more, tell us more. So in this way, Sri Rupa Goswami, he said, Akharunya Krishna yadi maita varga katalidam mudama rodi nai kuru paramimam muttar kitim tamalasya skande vinihita puja bhale riyam Yuta Prindaran Yechiram Avichala Pishkatitanu. Rupa Swami described how Radhika, when she fell in love with Krishna, she was thinking, how can I meet with him? I should write, write a letter, write a love letter to Krishna. So Radhika wrote a love letter and gave it to a Sati, and that Sati went to deliver it to Krishna. So when Krishna received this letter, he opened it, and then he said, Oh, this is very bad. This is very bad. This is against Dharma. I cannot meet with this girl. And you should you can ask Madhu Mangal. I am a very Paka Brahmachari. 
पूर्णा पुलिंद उर्दाय पतचरा तो पुलिंदी गर्ल्स दे लाइक अबरिजिनी आदिवासी दे लिव इन द फॉरेस्ट नॉट द आउटसाइड ऑफ देयर कल्चर दे नॉट सिविलाइज्ड दे कलेक्ट वुड एंड सेल इट टू द विलेजेस दे नॉट इवन क्लीन दे डोंट वेयर नाइस ऑर्नामेंट्स दे नॉट ब्यूटीफुल और एनीथिंग बट रादर आई एम सेइंग पूर्णा पूर्णा पुलिंद देयर लाइफ इज सक्सेसफुल व्हाई because one day they saw they looked on the grass the blades of grass of golden hill and they saw some kumkum kumkum is a cosmetics that is made on the body of bread gopi so she krishna meeting with the gopi that gopi had taken his lotus feet and held on her heart because that is called the prastavna that is the the first act or the introduction The introduction to loving pastimes is that the heroine first she holds her lover's feet on her heart. After that, all the other pastimes. So the kumkum from the body of that gopi came on the feet of Krishna. Afterwards, when he was returning home, he walked on the grass at Govardhan, and it was smeared there. So some pulindi girls, Aboriginal girls, they didn't even see Krishna, but they just saw that kumkum, and they took that from the grass. and they rubbed it on their faces and on their bodies and when they saw the kumkum they were afflicted with lust they became so lusty but when they took such that kumkum to their faces and bodies they became completely satisfied so rather i'm speaking this but i am, i don't have love they have love my life is not successful but their life is successful because they have touched this kumkum from the feet of krishna So Rupa Goswami gives this example of Madan Ba. Just note it down in your heart. Just remember that. It will give some idea. So then Rupa Goswami gives another example. Dushkaram katra dali marati komalayam akrat papura hant gosta pati nandan opama jatmalo par upadu hate. Radharani is saying to one Saki, she said, "Oh Saki, can you see this jasmine vine? There's a very delicate jasmine vine, Malati vine, here. You think that this Malati vine is very soft, but you should know that in the previous life, this Malati vine did kathor tapasya, very very hard austerities. What is the proof? What is the evidence?" because this malti vine is wrapped around the tamal tree whose complexion is similar to krishna's complexion so this is a astonishing thing one of the symptoms of madan ba is the radhika has so much love for krishna that not only does she think that anything in connection with krishna is glorious and successful but anything which is just in connection to something which slightly resembles krishna is completely successful so because the tamal tree its complexion is similar to krishna's complexion she's thinking this vine of the jasmine vine touching that tree or oh, must have done so many austerities in the previous life to embrace that which is just similar to krishna this is astonishing emotions that radical is experiencing but now a problem comes and the problem is this radical spoke these words about the pulindi girls in separation from krishna and she speaking to asaki one of her friend radrani spoke this glorification of the jasmine vine eh? in separation from krishna and she speaking to her friend but rupa goswami has written yoga eva bhaved aisha vichitra kopi madanaha yad vilas virajante nitya leela sahasradaha it means that this madan ba only appears at the time of meeting in other words madana kimo ba never manifest in separation madana kimo na ba only manifest at the time of the meeting of radha and krishna when they are together 
So why is it that Sri Rupa Goswami Pai has given two verses? Both of these verses are spoken by Radhika at, when she separated to Krishna from Krishna. They're not spoken to Krishna, they're spoken to Asati. Does everyone understand the question? Everyone's following. We're all on the same page. If you, if you understand where we are so far, you just raise your hand. It gives me encouragement. Thank you. So, this is the question. Rupa Goswami is saying, Madan Bhag only comes when Radha Krishna together. But the two examples he gave, they're both spoken at the time of separation and not to Krishna, but to a, one friend of Radha. So, what is the reconciliation? Yadvilasa virajante nitsilila sahasra saha. It means this. Perhaps you know that the pastimes of Krishna are going on in so many universes. Right? You know Krishna's pastimes, they move from universe to universe. That's prakat, manifest. But the aprakat is always there. In every universe, millions of universes, there's a planet Earth. On every planet Earth, there's a Vrindavan. And in every Vrindavan, either Prakat manifests to everyone, or Aprakat unmanifests from everyone, Radha Krishna's Leela is going on. Yeah? So, how many, uh, that dimension where the Leela is going on is called the Prakash. So, how many Prakash, how many Prakashis are there where Radha Krishna's Leela is going on? Unlimited. Millions and millions of millions. Not only in the material world, but in the spiritual world, Vrindavan there also has unlimited Prakash. Now, in each Vrindavan, Krishna is there, Nanda Maharaj is there, Yashoda Maya is there, Madhu Mangal is there, Subhau Sri Dham, Dham Vasu Dham, Arjuna Bhanga is talking Krishna, Vasan Kokyo Bhanga, so many coward boys, the Lita Vishaka. They're all there in every Prakash. Right? Yeah. So there's also millions of your shoulders, millions of men of But one mystery is this that each bridge bus, each associate of Krishna in each Prakash thinks I'm only in that one Prakash. You understand? understand? So but let's say Madhya Yashoda is in this universe, she knows I'm Madhya Yashoda and here. Krishna's my baby, I'm taking care of him. She's not aware that she's also present in another universe and another universe. So this is called, in our Gaudiya philosophy, Prakash Bhed, Abhiman Bhed. Abhiman means your identity of who you think you are, who you know you are, and that's your Abhiman, your identity. So Prakash Bhed, Abhiman Bhed, that means in each different Prakash, Prakash Bhed, each associate has Abhiman Bhed, they think, I am this person here. They don't know about any of the other Prakash. Understand? Prakash Ved, Abhiman Ved. Because if they knew, then there would be no sweetness in the Lila. Because Krishna's Lila is not about its human life. Mother Yashoda thinks, I'm a queen of the, this village. I'm a human being. I'm only whatever, I'm so old. And I have one son, my only child, Krishna. He's very hungry. I have to feed him my breast milk. If I don't feed him, he'll become skinny. Like this. She's thinking like this, very human-like. If, if you were to suddenly realize, oh, I'm in this universe, and that, then you won't think you're human anymore, right? Because it's superhuman. So in the Vrindavan Lila, Prakash Bay, Abhiman Bay. Everyone's identity is just limited to that one Prakash, that one Dao. Now, what happens is, that's true also in Radha Krishna Lila. When Krishna's meeting with Radhika, he thinks, I'm a coward boy. I'm the son of Nanda Maharaj. Like this. He never thinks he's Bhagavan. Because praying, the power of praying makes Krishna forget everything. He thinks he's an ordinary boy. And Radhika thinks, I'm a gopi. I'm a coward girl living in this village. And when I was a little girl, I fell in love with Krishna. But then a big problem came because my marriage was arranged to Abhimanyu. So now I have to live in Yavat with his dysfunctional family, Jutila and Kutila and Abhimanyu. Uh, 
They always try to control me. I can't meet with Krishna. I have to sneak out and meet with Krishna secretly. Otherwise, they'll discover and there'll be a big scandal in the village and it will be so terrible. Right? So this is all, this is none of a human life. So Radhika feels like an ordinary girl. Krishna feels like a natural boy. That is Madhuri Yalila. But when Radhika's love goes up to praise Nayaman, Panaya, Rag, Anurag, Bab, Mahabab, Buddha, Bab, Hari, Buddha, Bab, Mohan, Bab, Modan, Bab, Mohan, and last, when he comes to Madanaki Mahabab, something wonderful happens. When Radhika is in the embrace of Sri Krishna, when Madanaki Mahabab manifests, then in one Prakash, the emotions, from so many hundreds and thousands of other Prakashis that begin to overflow and come into the heart of Radhika in one Prakash. So even though she's in the embrace of Krishna and she's with him in another universe, she's crying and telling her Sati, oh, I am so unfortunate, but these Pulindi girls, they're fortunate. In another universe, she's telling her Sati, oh, I cannot meet with Krishna. But this jasmine vine embracing this tree is fortunate. In another universe, she's embracing Krishna. In another universe, Krishna's gone to mature and she's speaking with the bumblebee. Like this. So in this way, in one Prakash, Radhika is embracing Krishna, but emotions from hundreds of Leelas, Nitya Leela Sahasrada, they begin to leak into her consciousness and she begins to speak like a mad person. So, Srila uh, Rupa Goswami has said, Smara Vilasita Talpay Jalpalilam Analpam Kritam Akrita Vilupam Te Vibrate Pena Sardam Mito Yaga Parirampa Ramba Vritaika Varshma Shanama Pima Varadha Krishna Radha Krishna Anandayatvam He's saying, Smara Vilasita Talpe Jalpalila Manapa. When Radha Krishna embraced in the Kunja of Vrindavan, at that time, Radharani begins to speak. Jalpa. Jalpalila, she's speaking so much. And what is she saying? Kramakrita Parihinam. Her words, her sentences, they have no connection, they have no sequence to each other. Because so many emotions from here and there are coming and she's speaking it. And Krishna is looking and hearing what Radhika is saying and he cannot understand what she's saying or why she's saying all of these things. And Krishna is thinking, what's going on? What is she feeling? I don't know. I wish I knew what she was feeling. And because he had such an intense greed to know what she was feeling, therefore he appeared as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah. Understand? Therefore, he said, Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutalai. No one knew why Krishna appeared as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What he was with his Manobhishta, his innermost feeling. Why he came here. But Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutalai. Swayam Rupa Kadhamayam Dadati Swapadantikam. Sri Rupa Goswami, step by step, explained everything from Shraddha. Nishta, Ruchi, Asakti, Bhav. What is the Sadhan Bhakti, Bhava Bhakti, Prema Bhakti, then Sneha, Man, Prana, all the levels of Prem, all the way up to that highest mood, uh, to the Madan Bhav. Then, when what the person is absorbed, sinking in the nectar of Rupa Goswami's Katha, then they can understand why Mahabhu came here. Sri Chaitanya Manovishnam started. So we cannot. We can never repay Srila Rupa Goswami. The contribution he has made is unprecedented. Therefore, our Gurudev, with great pride, he used to say, we are Rupanuga. Rupanuga, the followers of Srila Rupa Goswami. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning of the class, I mentioned, Gora Ami, Gora Ami, Muki Boli Nagitali, Gora Acha, Gora Vichalare Poli Poli. Many persons say, I am Gaudiya, the follower of Mahaprabhu. From their mouth, they tell, but Gaur Achar Gaur Vichar, unless we do bhajan, take shelter of the holy name, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu set the example in his whole life, whole life. and Gaur Vichar, unless we go deeply 
into the teachings of Mahaprabhu that were revealed through the writing of Rupa Goswami, then we are not actually Gaudiya. Understand? Yeah? Not, yes, and hear from the lips of pure Vaishnava. Right? Then we can enter into this. So in this way, when Srila Gurudev used to glorify Rupa Goswami, it was if he had five mouths. He could not stop. And so those who are Gurudev, he's not physically present in this world. Those who are his disciples and those who are Rupanuga, they should not lose their time in the mundane things. They should not lose their time in only the in only Katara Vaidhi Bhakti and all of this. But rather, what has Srila Rupa Goswami given? Once Gurudev told me, I was alone with him actually in one hotel room, we were just passing through with the Los Angeles, and he called me. He said, Pray, Brother, come here. So I sat at his feet. Gurudev said, If you want to please me, then just try to understand what is a Shuddha Bhakti. What is pure devotion? What Srila Rupa Goswami has given? Enter into these things. By this, you can please me. So, if you want to please, our Guru Day, if you want to please our whole Guru Parampara and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, don't lose your time in any external things. Because this just this one drop that was on the end of Rupa Goswami's finger that he tasted, it will take you your whole life just to touch the surface of that. So we want to always we pray to Guru Dev and our Acharyas that we can come together. Sajataya Shaisni De Srimad Bhagavatata Nam Asudo Rasika Saha Sajataya Shaisni De Sadhu Sangha Swato Bare. Rupa Swami said, one should taste the many meanings of each word, each syllable of Srimad Bhagavatam in the association of Rasik Vaishnavas. That association should have three qualities. One bare should be significantly more advanced than ourselves. Sneak day means should have affection for us. That affection means that, that we have served that Vaishnava, we are related to, to that Vaishnava in such a way that he has decided, you will be my Kripa Patra. That means you will be the recipient of my mercy. So with such Vaishnavas who have affection for us, and Sajataya means associating with those Vaishnavas whose ashai, that means the inner region of their heart, is perfect and realized and filled with the very desires and the service that we are aspiring for. So if one is aspiring for the service of Radha and Krishna, we should be in the association of devotees who are in that mood, Rupa Nuga, following the mood of Srila Rupa Goswami. And in this way, gradually, gradually, Krishnam smaram janam chasya prastam nija smitam tat tat katar chaso kuryad vasam prajay sada. Rupa Goswami said, the first practice of Radhanuga Bhakti is to constantly remember Sri Krishna along with that associate that you want to follow, in whose footsteps you want to serve. Tat tat katar chaso, always be absorbed in the katar concerning Radha Krishna and that particular associate. And always, if you cannot physically be there, at least in your heart you should think I'm in Vrindavan, on the bank of Yamuna, in the lap of Viraj Govardhan, on the bank of Radhati. Always stay there. And in this way, gradually, gradually, the one's bhakti can mature through the stages. And naturally, not by imagination, but by internal realization, the Siddha one Siddharu will appear and then one can in turn be served. So in this way, I'm offering my Shada Pushpanji at the lotus feet of Srila Gurudev, at the lotus feet of Srila Rupa Goswami Pai, and I'm praying for their mercy, that I can always remain in very high class Sadhu Sangha and be absorbed in the Achar and the Vichar, the behavior and the deep philosophical conclusions of Sri Chaitanya. Mitai go to Premon Day. Yari, 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 yari